Good evening, beautiful creatures. My name is Angel Nightmare. Today I'm going to show you how to fix the left analog defect on the Nintendo Switch Pro Controllers that prevents you from going forward or just causes your character to start moving funky. I ended up buying this controller on Craigslist for about $30, which is $40 cheaper than what it is brand new. And I kind of had a feeling that something was going to be wrong with it. But luckily, I was able to fix this without spending too much money. And I didn't have much knowledge or experience on soldering, so I'm confident that you could easily do this as well. And as you can see here in the video, I'm holding forward on the controller and it keeps pulling back. You're going to need a soldering iron kit. I ended up getting a cheap one from Amazon. I'll leave a link to that in the description. This is the piece that we're going to be replacing on the controller. I got that from iFixit. I'm using the anti-static wrist strap that came with this tool kit that I got from Amazon also. Just want to make sure I don't accidentally short circuit anything. I got this kit so I can pretty much take apart anything in the future. I'm using this bit for this whole controller though. I'm also using some alcohol, some paper towels, tape, soldering wire that came with the kit, some flux that didn't come with the kit, and some wick. Link to everything is in the description below. And I also have a soldering pump. You prime it by clicking it in and pressing the button to suck out the melted solder. And also these angled tweezers that came with the kit. I took the screws out before I ordered the part. It's a fairly easy controller to take apart. All of the screws have about the same size head, but they're different lengths. So keep track of where each set of screws go. I had mine separated by each part I was taking apart. These two screws towards the top here were actually a little deep, so I ended up using this screwdriver from a glasses repairing kit for those. After you get all the screws out, you have to do a little bit of prying because there's adhesive on the handles of the controller. And then there is a ribbon cable that you just flip this little black tab up to remove. And after we remove this ribbon cable, we're just gonna set this faceplate to the side that houses all the buttons. We don't need to do anything else with that until we put the controller back together. And remove the analog sticks if they're still attached to the analog module. Uh, next thing, remove these four screws that are attached to the motherboard. This first one is the little plastic housing that shows the LED lights. You can just kind of pull that out. I actually ended up removing a couple more screws that I didn't need to undo, so you kind of can just ignore those. I'm not 100% sure if I needed to take the two screws out at the top. It seems like it only holds in the plastic piece for the sync button, but I ended up taking those out. Maybe you do need to take them out, so I'm not sure. Then I ended up looking up a tutorial on how to take this out because I didn't want to accidentally break the motherboard, but it just turns out that I was being too gentle and being too cautious about it. So you kind of just slide the motherboard down out of the USB-C spot at the top and then just kind of pull it forward. I'm not going to take out that gray cable or the HD rumbles because they have some type of adhesive on it that I won't be able to replace right now. This is the module we're going to be replacing. Right now what I'm doing is checking to see which pins are connected to that so I don't disconnect any wrong pins and also making sure that the pins line up with the new part. Okay, now for the fun part, desoldering. First, I'm adding flux to the pins before I heat them up with the soldering iron. The flux helps the melted solder beat up together, making it easier and cleaner to remove. It actually took me a really long time to desolder because this was the first time I ever done it. So it was kind of a learning experience for me. Uh, I ended up switching back to the thicker bit on the soldering pump because I'm using like a precision one now and I found that it wasn't heating up enough to remove these pins. I also ended up turning out the heat to 400 degrees because it wasn't hot enough and I ended up taping the controller down to keep it more steady while I was doing this. I ended up desoldering for about an hour. It was trial and error because like I said it was the first time I'm doing this but the mistakes that I've noticed, I was waiting too long to use the suction pump after I was heating it up because it dries rather quickly and I didn't realize that. Um, but once I started getting it right, it was pretty much taking out the majority of the old solder. And all I had to do after that 
was take the wick, the braided copper wire, and kind of like dip it in the flux and just heat the side of the copper wire to pick up the remaining solder. I also ended up accidentally burning myself and the tablecloth, so please be sure that you're paying attention and that you have the proper safety gear on. Don't be like me. So after I got all the solder out, I had to use a little bit of force to pull it out. Um, I think I was also being too gentle with it and you know, going back and trying to continue to desolder and then realize that I had to put a little force behind pulling it out. I ended up pulling off these green sensors off the sides of the module first, but you don't have to do that. I was in trial and error mode and for some reason, those pins were easier to take out than the other ones. Now we're gonna be soldering in the new piece. This is a lot easier than desoldering in my opinion. Um, I also forgot to mention that be sure that you have that wet sponge next to you and that you're constantly wiping off the excess metal off the soldering iron while you're using it. Just add a tiny bit of solder and then hold it to the side of the pin to heat it up and then slowly add the soldering wire to the other side till it like bubbles up and then lift up on the pin with the soldering iron after that to make sure that it's completely surrounding the pin. The first couple of pins I ended up using too much solder so I kind of like desoldered a little bit uh, with the suction pump to kind of give myself a redo and then I just went around and made sure I hit all of these pins. I'm using the masking tape to hold in the module on the bottom side of the motherboard so I can make sure that the piece doesn't get crooked or come out while I'm soldering it. I'm also using a masking tape to try to hold the motherboard uh, as still as possible. This would have been easier if I had some sort of vice grip or something to kind of hold the controller in place while I was doing this. My hands were also very shaky because I had way too much caffeine today, uh, but I was trying my best to be as careful as possible and not get solder everywhere, but as you can see, my hands were, were kind of shaky. I think I did a pretty decent job for my first time uh, soldering pins like this. Uh, the only thing I've ever soldered before was like just wires, nothing like on a motherboard. Um, if you think I did something wrong, or if you have any tips or advice for me, please leave them in the comments below. I would love to learn and, you know, get better at doing this. Now I'm just taking the, the alcohol on some paper towels and I'm wiping all of the burnt flux that's left over on the motherboard and taking a Q-tip as well and going through in between the pins and getting those parts as well. After that, I attach the motherboard back to the controller and I'm going to reattach the ribbon cable. Uh, it's really hard to put this in and trying to get it visible on the camera. So pretty much what you're doing is just sliding that ribbon cable back into that slot and snapping it closed with that little black flap. Now I'm going to reattach the analogs and I'm putting the shell of the controller back together but I'm not actually screwing in any of the parts just so I can make sure that the controller works and I don't have to take it apart again. And the first thing I noticed is the light came on so that's good and I'm gonna test the buttons to make sure I didn't mess up anything else on the motherboard. All of the buttons seem to be functioning here. And now I'm going back to the calibrate control stick option to see if it works. I'm resetting it back to the factory settings because I tried recalibrating it to fix the issue before replacing this piece. As you can see, the controller is not moving on its own anymore. Now we just gotta test and see if it's going up, it's not falling back down, it's not fighting me anymore, and the controller's fixed. I would say this is probably like an intermediate level job. Um, it took me a while to get a hang of desoldering and using the soldering iron, 
but other than that it was a pretty easy job so if you already know how to solder this will probably take you like 30 minutes max to do nice yeah so anyway uh, thank you guys so much for watching uh, I decided to do this video because I couldn't find any tutorials for this uh, specifically for the Pro Controller and I know that this was like a defect that people were talking about a lot on the Nintendo forums and on Reddit so I figured that I would attempt to fix this and teach anybody else how to fix this from a beginner's perspective I plan on doing more things like this because I'm always looking to save money on tech and gear and video game equipment um, so if you guys would like to see me try to fix more things that I get from eBay or Craigslist uh, just leave it in the comments below anywho thank you so much for watching if you're new please subscribe if you enjoyed this video leave a like if you didn't enjoy it leave a dislike and I'll see you in the next video